Hi, hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Freya, I'm a knitter living in Glasgow with my wife Karina, I'm a tea cat, Skiska and Monique. Um, it's been a while. This is my first podcast of the year, which is crazy because it's so far into the year. So I have a lot to talk about. Um, as always, let's do the boring bit first. Um, and then I thought I'd do a little bit like, of an intro or about me just because it's been so long since I've done one I think um, and if there's anybody new then I suppose if you're interested then um, in getting to know me and um, so feel free to skip right past all of this I know it's not for everyone and I will not be offended if you just want to get to the knitting <laughs> but um, oh my gosh I'm trying to think of everything that I should say so um, I've got a Ravelry and I've got a wish list. Um, if anybody fancies supporting me that way by buying me a pattern, and thank you to everyone that has. Um, it's been amazing. <laughs> I think it's such a great way to support um, a little podcaster <laughs> if you want. Obviously, um, don't have to. And um, I have a Kofi or a Kofi. Um, if you fancy supporting me that way, again, you don't have to. Um, just watching the video and watching the ads is enough. I actually managed to get, what's it called? Monetization? I can't remember. Um, so if you do watch the ads, then I do get a little bit of money. Um, not a lot. <laughs> and I think it would take all year to get to the point where I could actually, um, withdraw the money like you have to get to like 60 pounds in order to like withdraw the money um which I don't think will happen <laughs> anytime soon but um yeah that's another way um I have an Instagram uh that I've not been posting on I do sometimes do stories but I don't I've not done, done a post in ages I've just not really felt like doing social media um but I did today, <laughs> so here I am. Um, so hopefully that's everything, and I I guess I'll just jump into a little bit of about me. <laughs> so my name is Freya, uh, and I live in Glasgow, and um, I've been knitting since I was a kid. <laughs> I can remember learning how to knit, but um, not really. <laughs> I remember how frustrating it was or how difficult it was to get my head around it but um, I think I knit, one of the first things I knit or how I learned to knit was knitting a pair of socks. So um, and then I didn't knit for a while and then I picked it back up again um, when I was maybe about 19 for a couple of months and then I didn't pick it up again until um, the beginning of lockdown, which I feel like a lot of people have the same story as me um, and ever since then I have never not been knitting so yeah and um, so I have bipolar and CPTSD which is a big contributing factor as to <laughs> why I've not posted in a while um, so yes I've actually just finished therapy at the beginning of this year and um, so that's a big change as well it feels weird but also quite um, uh, exciting I suppose to to be doing it alone <laughs> um, what else what else what else what else I did um, a fashion textiles HND um, which is like a two year course at college. I think it's the equivalent to year one and year two of uni. I could be wrong or just year one, I'm not sure. Um, I decided not to go to uni. I tried to go to uni once, I didn't end well. I got very ill. It's just not for me. So since then I have been trying to find a job in the knitting industry in Glasgow, which apparently doesn't exist. So <laughs> yeah. Um, that as well as juggling my mental health, um, that's kind of what I've been up to <laughs> since I've left college. Um, and hopefully 
um, hopefully I find a job. <laughs> if anybody knows a job in Glasgow to do in knitting, I would love to do it. So yeah, um, I suppose jumping into why I've not podcast, podcasted, podcast in a while is because I kind of had a dip with my mental health, I had a lot of personal things happen. Um, I got diagnosed with a autoimmune disease, which um, I wasn't expecting. And it's fine, it's like a very mild one, but it's still like done a lot of learning and had to think about changing a couple of things and all of that, as well as like other life stuff that everybody, <laughs> you know, has to go through. Um, also, I had a dip in my knitting mojo. I really just didn't know what to knit. And also, I had a massive, like, my hands just was in so much pain. Um, I have hypermobility, um, which contributes to the fact that I get a lot of hand and wrist pain but I just pushed it way too far this time and it's just, the pain was excruciating and it was so disheartening and so sad. Um, I've since got it under control um, and actually I bought some rings that stop my mm, finger joints from bending all the way back when I knit, which has been amazing. If anybody's got hypermobility, I'll um, send a link, put, send a link? <laughs> Put a link to the rings in the description um, if you're interested. It's been amazing. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of it. I just I also like I haven't really been watching knitting podcasts. I've not really been active at all really, just because I think as well as ending therapy, I've kind of wanted to explore other parts of myself because knitting has been such a big part of my life it's been like the main coping mechanism and it's been fun to see what happens when I don't have that um, and I'm very lucky to have been to have found like a, a community outside of knitting that Karina was part of and then I got very much welcomed into it and that's been amazing um, so yeah that's kind of everything that's happened um, that's me <laughs> and then you know here I am today so I guess let's just jump straight into the knitting after that um, <laughs> I know there's loads of things that I've probably left out of that but oh well so let's start with what I'm wearing this is a finished object um, and it's the Sophie sweater by Suzanne Muller. Um, I knit the size 3 and I knit it in Sandner's Gran Sunday and a Rico Mohair. And I'll stand up. I use a back camera so I can't really see what you're seeing, but um, it's quite uh, wrinkled <laughs> at the moment. Um, it's hard to get it all in shot, but it's a wrap jumper thing. <laughs> But um, I've always want, I, I wanted to knit a wrap for the longest time. I've had the Knitting for Olive one in my wish list for quite a long time. I also had this one in my wish list, and Karina <laughs> um, bought me this pattern and I pretty much cast it on straight away because I had yarn that was the perfect amount for it. Um, and I'm so glad that I picked, oh, Karina picked <laughs> this one instead of the wrap because it's so much easier to wear. Like I'm not thinking about fussing around with the straps and you know, fiddling around. Like I just put it on and it stays there <laughs> and I don't have to think about it. Although if I was to knit this again, I think I would knit the size down because um, it does gape open, which I'm not that bothered about because usually I'll wear like, um, like a strappy top underneath. I'm not today because I think I would get too hot. So I'll put a um, safety pin just at the bit where it would gape open, um, which seems to be doing the job. <laughs> um, 
so that's fine. Um, and I really enjoyed knitting this one. I think I knit on five millimeter needles. Um, yeah, five millimeter, five millimeter needles. Um, and it's a fingering weight with a mohair, so it's a bit of a looser gauge for that combination, which I really like. I like loose gauges. I'm not a fan of tight gauges and dense fabric. I like loose gauges and flowier fabrics. Not too loose though. <laughs> um, this one knit up really fast. I think because I'm used to knitting so many oversized jumpers, especially recently, like I went from the storm sweater which was very oversized and my um chestnut um jumper that I modified both of which were like super oversized so going from that to this it just knit up so fast <laughs> um which was nice especially because it was like at the time that my mojo was kind of dipping and this is kind of this helped me um bring myself out of that <laughs> which was nice um, so there are a couple of things that I would change. I don't believe I did any modifications. The only modification I did was when you um, do the wrap, you like wrap the like fabric over and then you knit like the two layers together when you're doing the ripping. And I have quite a small waist in proportion to my shoulders and bust as what is standard I found so I overlapped it by a couple more stitches so that it had a smaller circumference at the ribbing which I think worked well however I also think it emphasized the issue that I feel like this has and basically for um so it's a knit as you go like edging which I love um big fan of the cottage cardigan because it has the same like knit as you go button band um, which I find so satisfying because when you're finished you're finished you don't have to pick up stitches and do a button band but there's like two I think you slip two stitches at the edge of both edges <laughs> um, which creates a really like clean edge however it does constrict the fabric so it doesn't have as much stretch and give as the rest of it which is pulling up the side um i think um like you kind of like see how it's kind of bunching here um <laughs> it's hard to show <laughs> but basically it's like pulling up that little section a bit and on the other side as well which is annoying that annoys me um i think it looks fine um because of the length uh it's a little bit cropped um so i think it's fine it kind of adds a bit of like balloonyness um which i don't hate but i would have preferred it to be a little sit a little bit you know straighter and not scrunch up a little bit so if I do this again I wouldn't slip the stitches instead I would have um so it's like a knit one purl one for this uh, edge stitches and then in the pattern you slip those two knit stitches at the end instead I would have two knit stitches and then knit one purl one knit one purl one knit one purl one because I found that if you do that those two knit stitches kind of one of the edge stitch kind of folds in a little bit and it creates I think it still creates like a, a clean edge Um, hopefully that makes sense basically instead of doing knit one purl one, knit one purl one, knit one purl one you do knit two then knit one purl one, knit one purl one if you know what I mean I'm not explaining that well at all <laughs> which is fine Um, someone's looking in my window <laughs> I have the blinds all the way up to try and get as much natural daylight as possible but it does mean the whole street can see me. Um, I think that's everything to be honest. I mean like I didn't do any modifications that I can think of um, so I guess I would I would recommend the pattern. <laughs> Usually I do a lot of modifications just to suit 
my body and suit the kind of jumper that I like. Um, which I didn't have to do with this one, which was fun. It was nice to sort of just relax into the pattern. However, if I were to do it again, I would do that modification on the edge. Um, yeah, it feels so weird <laughs> podcasting again and talking about things because I also finished this a while ago, so I can't, it's not like really fresh in my memory. So hopefully I've gone through everything. Um, and I guess I'll just jump straight into the second jumper that I finished. I think I'm looking at my notes, that's why I'm looking down. I think, yes, I've only finished two garments since I last spoke. Um, so this is my second one and it's actually not for me, it's for Karina. And it is the zipper sweater by Patina. Um, so Karina's been asking for this for ages <laughs> and I finally felt like knitting it. So I knit it. It was also nice because it was on a bit of a chunkier needle. Um, I've not written down the needle that I used, but I think it was a six. Um, which is kind of my limit as to how comfortable I feel like I would say that really I can go up to a five and a half millimeter millimeter needle without it being slightly uncomfortable I think six millimeter is pushing it whereas like it's a bit uncomfortable and I can't get into such a nice rhythm that I can with a smaller needle but it's still doable and it was still nice to have it grow a bit faster Um. So this is, um, it's, I didn't get the men's version, I got the women's version and it's the thicker version, I believe. I think it's just called the zipper sweater and the other sweater, zipper sweaters are like zipper sweater light and zipper sweater man. I don't know, I've not actually looked, but I think that's right. <laughs> so I knit this with, um, one strand of drops lima and one strand of drops brushed alpaca which created I think the gauge is pretty much spot on I can't remember <laughs> the specific gauge and the specific yarn that she recommends but this combination worked and it got the gauge really well and it's also a really nice fabric I'm super jealous <laughs> um, and I really want to make myself one. So um, I knit the size four, which has um, a bit less positive ease than the pattern suggests, which is what Karina wanted. The modifications that I made was I cast on more stitches on the neck. I think I cast on the stitch count for the neck for the size six. And then on the first round of just the raglan plain knitting, I did enough increases to get to the size four stitch count. And then I just followed the size four from there on, um, which I'm glad I did because I feel like that proportion fits her better than if I was to knit the size four neck. Um, and I also made the body longer compared to the pattern and the sh arms shorter. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm lying. I knit the body two pattern and I knit the arms shorter. <laughs> um, just because that's that's just what fit Karina. So that's what I did. Um, and that's it. Again, I followed the pattern. Um, I would recommend the pattern. It's great. Um, it's fun. It's super simple. Um, but with like a little bit of a challenge because of the zip. I have knit the Gia sweater by Sandra Scan before and I absolutely adore that sweater. And that, I think that's why Karina wanted a zipper sweater but I said, I'm not knitting that one again. <laughs> Cause that was like a labor of love and I'm not ready to go through it again. But I said I would knit this one. <laughs> and I, I actually really enjoy putting zips into knitted things. I didn't think I would. I did it for the Gia sweater and I've done quite a lot of um, honey pouches and honey purses and my version of the Marie Clutch. So I've, I've actually done quite a few zips into <laughs> knitted things that 
Um, so I think I think I've gotten quite good at them. I um, really wanted to avoid getting that bump, um, and I think it lays pretty flat. Um, I didn't use a petite knit zip. Um, I got this one off of eBay, um, which I think works really well. The zip is a little bit darker, um, and I think I would have preferred to not have seen that, but I think it's fine. I think it's close enough for it's not like, that's weird, why is that showing? <laughs> I also really like the um, pull tab, is that what you call it? I don't know. Um, I think it's like simple enough, um, but it's not just like a, a normal zip that you'd find on like a pair of jeans or something. Um, I guess I'll link the link to the eBay thing listing <laughs> um, if anyone's interested. Um, so yeah, I think that's that. Karina really likes it. Uh, she's worn it a few times um, and she says it's comfy, she likes it. Um, so yeah, nothing but compliments and I think I wish I would have finished it <laughs> a bit sooner on in the cold weather but I still think living in Scotland will still get a lot of use out of it. <laughs> So um, yeah, I think it's fine and it'll last. So um, it's not bobbled yet, but I don't think she's worn it enough to experience that yet. So we'll see. Um, I guess when I do my roundup at the end of the year, I'll tell you <laughs> how it's worn. Um, yes, so I'm actually not doing this in the order that I finished them. Before I finished any of these, I finished my excavation blanket, finally. I did originally have the plan to finish it by the end of last year, which I didn't do. I think I ended up finishing it sometime in January, I think. I must have. Um, but I really, really went in hard. Um, <laughs> for that last stint, like I really, really, that's how I hurt my hand, I was knitting so much. Um, but I'm so glad I finished it. I, I really wish I had had it for like the really cold snap, but um, like it's the warmest thing. It's incredible. I've not, I've not knitted a blanket before, that's my first blanket. and. I will not be knitting another blanket anytime soon, but I'm gonna have to knit another one at some point. Like, maybe not that pattern, but definitely a knitted blanket because it's just amazing. It's next level. Nothing compares. It's so comfy. It's so warm. Like, it can be so cold in the house, and I'll have that blanket on, and you just wouldn't know. You just you don't need to put the heating on, you just need that blanket, it's so warm. Um, I didn't take the full blanket in here because it was so big. I made it to fit a double bed and it fits with just a little bit of overhang on the sides, which is perfect, that's exactly what I wanted, um, which is amazing. I can't believe I actually managed to knit it that big. Um, and I think I think I started with three full big bags of yarn and that was like packed tightly in the bags of, they're just like the organza, like this bag. In fact, it, I think it was a bigger bag than this maybe. Anyway, three of those and I finished with um, just one bag left, um, which isn't packed to the brim. So I did a good job in using a lot of scraps, um, which is amazing. Um, but the cats loved it so much um, that I just had to knit them one as well. Because 
I just, the thought of having a blanket for us and a blanket for them was just too adorable. I had to do it. So I brought that one in instead. <laughs> it's still pretty big, actually. I, it originally, like, <laughs> I was going to knit it smaller, um, but I just ended up knitting it bigger, obviously. Um, and they love this. They lie on it all the time. Although it's not their favourite knitted blanket that I've made them. I, I <laughs> they fight over that spot. Apparently it's the best spot in the house. Um, and it's just like a granny square blanket that I whipped up, like, because it's super, super chunky. I think it's dropped snow um, and they love that. But I think this comes in second and they still use it. So um, I just thought I'd bring this one in instead because the other one is so big. It's so um, heavy. I wish I would have, um, oh no, I did, right. So the stats are, <laughs> I think it's about 1,850 grams. The longest row was 460 stitches. And if I'm not, if I haven't, I think I've done this right. Um, I used Google Sheets, like their version of Excel to do this. So I think it's right. I think it's around about two, 210,000 stitches, I think, <laughs> which is insane. Like that just blows my mind, like almost two kilograms of yarn and 210,000 stitches, which is crazy. <laughs> and no wonder my hands hurt so much after but for the blanket I used scraps of I either held fingering weight double or I did like a DK weight I did also throw in some sport weights and some heavy DK and even Aran weights in there as well I love the like different like a thicker yarn will create a thicker stripe and a thinner yarn will create a thinner stripe so I like that all the stripes are uniform and they're kind of all over the place. I didn't follow like a a rule when it came to what colours go next. Like I didn't do a dark colour, then a light colour, then a dark, then a light. I just kind of did what looked the nicest to me and I didn't repeat colours too soon. I think this one's kind of different because I did have a lot of yarn and I, I had a lot of different yarn yarns in this. These are like all of my little scraps that I had left at the end. So I had a bit um, of a smaller amount of yarn that I could choose. <laughs> Why can't I explain this? But in as there's a lot more like gaps in between the different colours which I really like and because I had so many scraps I was able to do that although I did buy <laughs> I did end up buying a bit of yarn for it I think I ended up overall spending about 30 pounds on it um of all the yarn that I bought specifically for it but everything else was scraps which is amazing um, and I still have scraps left so um, I'll have to think what to do with that <laughs> I'm sure I'll find something um, so yeah if you are thinking about making it I would go for it and I would definitely recommend it it was so Moorish and because it's just knit back and forth you don't really have to think but you also get that added excitement and interest of choosing a different yarn every two rows and knitting with a different yarn every two rows which you know keeps keeps you interested and it keeps you wanting to knit more <laughs> uh, so yeah I think that's enough on that and I think we'll move on to a balaclava so when I go out I wear I'm trying to it's over there 
I'm, I'm not gonna move everything because it's underneath a lot of stuff but I have two Sophie scarves that I wear and they're big ones I think I think I'm right in saying that I bought the Sophie scarf pattern but I, I um, modified it to be like the Sophie shawl pattern so it's bigger um so obviously in the middle it's bigger and if it rains or if I'm really cold I'll put like the middle on top of my head and I'll wrap the ends around so it ends up being like a balaclava um which I really like it keeps me really warm and I don't like wearing hats so it's kind of like um a good way of keeping warm without wearing a hat <laughs> but I just thought do you know what maybe I'll try a balaclava because obviously it's in I mean they've been like trendy for a while like a good couple of years now and I've always been like no <laughs> definitely not and I don't think I see them don't get me wrong but in terms of practicality and in terms of keeping warm it's been amazing so I've actually knit two I've only worn one because I've only just finished the other one and I've not like been out to wear it basically but this is the first one that I knit so this is the Linu or the Lenu hood by Anna Strict so for this one I used this is actually leftovers from my first chestnut sweater that I knit and that was a couple of years ago now one of my most worn jumpers <laughs> and I also really like the colour and the combination of yarn so it's I actually have two strands of drops flora and one strand of drops mohair I think the pattern asks for one strand of fingering weight and one strand of mohair I think um but I wanted a bit more of a structured hood instead of like a flimsy flopping about hood and this works really well. I still think it's still got drape, um, but it holds the shape a little bit better. And I think having the ties in the front really help give it a kind of a structure as well. I think I knit these ties longer than the pattern states so that I can have the bigger bow on it, um, which I love. I'm not gonna put it on just now because I've throwing my hair up in a quip but um and also I don't suit it I don't think I want to take pictures of myself in it um but it's so practical and I have worn it um a good few times and it's good for um keeping the rain out a little bit I sometimes I <laughs> don't look at the weather forecast and I go out and I'm wearing nothing waterproof and it starts raining and a couple of times I've had this hood and I put it on and it's kept me dry enough Um, I don't obviously think it would work for a long period of time in very heavy rain but if it's just like spitting um, it does do something <laughs> uh, and yeah so there's not much to say, although I did do a couple of modifications. Um, I knit the size two. I'm not sure if it came out that size, to be honest. But um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. I used 129 grams of drops water and 31 grams of mohair, so it's a great stash buster as well. Uh, the needles I used now. This is quite interesting because I used a 4.5 for the ribbing, a 4.75 for the main body, and then um, it has you change needles at the end of the ribbing to a larger needle so it kind of flares out and it doesn't bunch up um, when you wear it. And I used a 5mm for that. So, um, a 4.75 millimeter needle does not exist. Ravelry says it exists, which has annoyed me to no end for so long because I've done so many swatches <laughs> and knit so many things um, where I do a swatch in a 4.5 and I do a swatch in a 5 and 
the perfect gauge would fall in between that. And obviously I've not had a 4.75 needle <laughs> and I've complained about it so much that Karina um, got me custom needles made for my Christmas <laughs> um, in a 4.75 millimetre size. She got, um, it came, so they're wooden. I think the person that made them is from India but they're on Etsy, they're quite expensive <laughs> and she had a lot of issues, a lot, a lot. I think um, in terms of them saying that they sent it when they didn't, going back and forth, they were like, <laughs> Karina showed me the messages and there were just so, so, so many. One explaining what a 4.75 millimetre needle is and why it's, <laughs> you know, why it's not you know, a normal size for them to make, if you know what I mean. And two, trying to get them to tell them where the package was. <laughs> but it did end up arriving, which neither of us kind of thought would happen. Um, and honestly, I adore them. There's three long ones and three short ones. However, and then like a good couple cables. Um, but there's not a small enough cable to fit the small needles and make it I think a 40 centimetre needle is 40, yeah, 40 centimetre length is the size of needle I use to knit sleeves so and it doesn't have that um, and I think I'm going to try it and get um, a cable from a different um, brand um, that fingers crossed, fingers crossed would fit in the 4.75 but I'm not hopeful and I don't like doing magic loop at the best of times especially on sleeves but I think I'm gonna suck it up and I'll have to knit <laughs> on magic loop on the sleeves if I want to knit a garment out of the 4.75 um but I managed to knit um because this is just back and forth it's not in the round until you get to the end um but then it goes straight into the smaller needles anyway so that's fine um yeah I love them I will link it below but to be honest we had like it was just hell trying to deal with them but they did end up arriving so take from that what you will uh, if you want to ask them to make a 4.75 millimeter needle <laughs> uh, yeah oh I didn't show my other one <laughs> this is the second one that I made this is actually leftovers from Karina's uh, zipper sweater but it's just the drops lima yeah it's just a drops lima held single for this and I knit a size three for this because I wanted a more oversized um space for the head but in doing that it's a lot deeper than kind of looks good because if I want it to sit where I want it to sit on the face there's a lot of extra fabric at the back which I'm not a fan of, so I think this is going to be a Christmas present to whoever wants it. <laughs> um, which is great because now I have a Christmas gift knit up already and it's only March. <laughs> and that is, no it's not all of my finished objects, I will lie. I have one more finished object which is another sweet shop blanket. I have knit this before. Um, but I knit it, I modified it to look like her like cushion cover, like the quilt cushion cover look. Um, I modified it to look like that because that pattern actually hadn't come out yet. <laughs> but I did actually follow the pattern um, as is for this version. Um, again, 
this is leftovers. There's some leftovers from Karina's zipper sweater. There's leftovers from <laughs> that hood and my jet mat. Um, all of them are leftovers, apart from this green, which I got to knit the porcelain sweater. <sighs> but it's just not a good yarn for colour work. So I decided to take that contrast colour and put it into this because I didn't have enough of all the other leftovers to knit a big enough blanket. And this is actually a little throw to go over the arm of the sofa because I used the other one for one arm <laughs> and then the other arm is bare. So I wanted to knit a, a, another one to go over it. Not a big fan of the light uh, green with all the other colours, but the colour of the walls in our um, living room is actually pretty much very close to this colour, so it kind of works. Um, and yeah, you don't, it doesn't stand out as being like, that's weird. So it's fine. <laughs> and there's not really much to say other than I adore that pattern. I love making it. I love short rows. Um, I love picking up stitches. Um, I, I like increasing and decreasing. It's just like everything that I like in a pattern and it's really mindless. Um, once you've read the pattern and you've done all the different squares a couple of times, um, I didn't really have to look at the pattern. I did, I had like um, a couple of days gaps in between knitting on this and I did have to check it just to be like, is that right? It was right, but I, I like to double check. <laughs> and yeah, knit up really fast nice mindless piece um, and to be honest that kind of takes me into where I am now because I didn't finish it that long ago I've not even washed and blocked it I just put it straight on the sofa and I'll wash and block it if and when it gets dirty enough to do that um, and I kind of was knitting on that because I was <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what do I knit now? I'm kind of in a stage where I'm like, I don't know what to knit. Um, but I have cast on something else um, after that, um, which is my, one of the only whips I have at the moment. I have a whip that I put away like at the beginning of autumn or at the end of autumn, which is like a, a cotton linen viscose blend yarn jumper um, which I was like it's just too cold to knit on this I've not felt like picking that up again I the my only other whip is the Umbria summer top which is on very small needles and it's on with one strand of drops uh, not drops knitting for olive silk um, and I literally have maybe this much to go on the body. I've done the arms, um, but I just completely ran out of steam. Um, so I've got that and I've got this. So um, one of you very, very, very kindly <laughs> um, gifted me some mohair. Um, they have gifted me uh, two other sweater quantities of mohair, which I've knit up into my champagne cardigan, the black one, which I wear all the time. And it's sweater number 15, I think it is, which is the cabled one. And I adore both of those. The cottage cardigan is one of my most worn pieces because it's an inside garment. <laughs> um, but she gifted me uh, this mohair, which is a Korea, or Korea? deluxe um, silk mohair, uh, if that's going to focus. <laughs> it's, so it's actually, it's tw 20 grams, which is 240 meters. So that's thinner than the usual mohair because like a drops mohair is, I think it's 212 meters for 25 grams. And this is 45% silk, 
33% blue hair and 22% baby alpaca and it's just the most gorgeous like combination it's so so soft and um, I've not actually knit with the combin like a, a fiber makeup I can't think of the word that I'm trying to find um I've not knit with like a mohair silk and alpaca before um but it's absolutely gorgeous and I've got some really nice yarn to go along with this um which is the Phil Kalana Panilla um, this is actually my first time knitting with Phil Kalana, like any Phil Kalana. Um, it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool and 50 grams is 175 meters. So I think that's like a sport weight. Um, I think. <laughs> or like a light DK. Um, and I, I think I've done pretty well in, I don't think that's coming up. The way it looks it's like um it's like a traditional denim color and i actually i was looking um at colors that suit i think i've got a neutral undertone to my skin and obviously i've got ginger hair so i was looking at colors that suit that combination <laughs> and this is one of the colors that came up and i don't have anything in that color so I asked for this colour in the mohair and then I found this one which is like the closest match that I could get in a second strand and they're a little bit different but knit up you wouldn't be able to tell but they're different I don't think so anyway um so I am knitting the what's it called <laughs> waffle loop roll neck uh jumper by other loops and one of you very kindly gifted this pattern to me as well so this is like <laughs> a very special project for me and so far i have really liked knitting it i've knit so it's a drop shoulder and i've knit the back i've knit the two front sections and now i've joined those together to knit the main front section <laughs> um and i chose the right size for me i chose a size two which I think gives me like 21 centimetres of positive ease, which is as much as I wanted. Um, I didn't want it to be super oversized, but I still want, wanted it to be oversized. However, this isn't oversized <laughs> and the neck hole is tiny. I know like I've uh, checked my gauge and the gauge it is now isn't far off what it's going to be when it's blocked out, if you know what I mean. And the neck hole is tiny. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it's tiny and I am not a fan of necklines so close to my neck. I feel that sometimes I feel like it strangles me. And also, um, it's not oversized enough at the top here. They do, they actually do decreases at the top. Um, I don't know if you can see that, like there's decreases here and here, um, which is strange. I've never seen that before, but it just makes the drop shoulder even smaller. And, and then you do the it increases at the bottom for the arms and then you incre uh, cast on stitches under the arms as well to get the oversized look in the bust. But I like the oversized look on the shoulders as well, which this doesn't have. So I'm in a bit of a place where I adore this pattern. I love the final garment look and I really want it. But I don't want to take a risk using this um, combination of very special yarn on this garment for me to end up not being the biggest fan of the final fit and not wearing it um so i i think i was talking to karina about this for like an hour last night <laughs> like i was just like i just don't know what to do because i love i think the it's very hard to 
put across how fabrics feel like on camera but the drape is gorgeous the it's not too thick it's not too thin the waffle structure feels very satisfying i think the the feel of it the texture of it i love um and the yarn is just perfect for it like it is perfect for this pattern but i don't think the fit is perfect for my body and for what i like and i don't want to take the risk on such a beautiful yarn for me not to wear it um which is really sad because everything about it is perfect apart from the fit and the way that they've you know made the fit in the pattern and I could do modifications and I could change it but I don't really want to <laughs> um I don't really want to change a pattern so much like that I could I definitely could but it would mean changing everything it would mean changing the neck and again that's taking a risk like I'm not a pattern designer I'm not a pattern writer I can do it I do it for the machine I um I design my own garments and I knit them on the machine but um for me that's not as big a risk because one the gauge is always going to stay the same because it's a machine you set the gauge number and it'll always knit at the same gauge obviously if you change the yarn that will change it but from the gauge swatch to the final garment your gauge really isn't going to change um at all um maybe slightly but not really um however with hand knitting that's not the case i have done many a gauge swatch and it has lied to me and the garment has ended up being a completely different gauge and I don't want that to happen. Um, I don't want to take that risk with such a special yarn combination. The mohair was a very um, generous gift and I love this mohair. <laughs> I think every time I get um, that you gift me a mohair, <laughs> I, I'm like, this is my favorite mohair. <laughs> so yeah, it has not, you know, it's lived up to that hype. Um, and also I really like this yarn as well, it's, um, I've definitely had softer yarns, um, but it's not too scratchy and with the mohair it's absolutely next to skin soft for me. I can tolerate yarn um, wool. Um, I think I can tolerate wool a little bit more than what I thought I could. I thought I was very sensitive and actually now that I'm thinking about it, I think I was at the beginning, but I've kind of slowly conditioned myself <laughs> to not be as sensitive. Um, so I can tolerate it, it's soft to me. Um, so I really just want to get as much wear out of it as possible. So I think like last night I was talking to Karina for ages and I think I kind of made up my mind that I want this yarn to be something else and I don't want to take as big a risk in what I make because I want to be sure that I'm going to wear it so much. So um, I don't know, I think this will um, divide opinions or whatever the phrase is but I think I'm going to rip it out and I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to make another one of these wraps. Um, I love this wrap. I've um, I've not been out a lot <laughs> recently um, for a couple of different reasons but this is absolutely something that I'll think I'm going out today what do I want to wear I want to wear that <laughs> um, so I think if I have a second one and um, I will wear it I know that I will wear it it's such an easy thing to wear it's like it's wearing a jumper but, it, but it's slightly fancy and it's slightly, you know, dressing up <laughs> um, and also I love the yarn combination, I love the colour, I think it would go with a lot that I have in my wardrobe whereas this is very much a statement and I'm not a big statement person <laughs> so I think I would get a lot more wear out of that, uh, wear out of that colour compared to this colour and also I would be able 
to correct some of the things that annoys me in this one. Um, and I love re-knitting patterns. I love um, tweaking them to be perfect. I don't know what that says about me, <laughs> but I just love doing that. And also this pattern takes up um, less yarn than that jumper. So I would actually have enough left over to do a small slip over. <laughs> um, and I've wanted to knit a slip over, another slip over for a long time. I've knit two, the Stockholm V-neck slip over by Petite Knit, and I love them. Um, however, they're both slightly too big, which is great in some circumstances and I still really love them. But I have wanted to knit a slightly more fitted uh, slip over. <laughs> so I would have enough yarn to knit one of these and a slip over, which I think would be better because then I get two garments and I know that I would wear them. However, it's a bit more of a boring option. And that I do, every time I pick something to knit, I'm like, this will be boring to do on my podcast, which I know is, you know, not a great way of thinking because I should be thinking, I'm going to wear this a lot. I want to knit it. If it's boring, it's boring, but it's wearable for me. <laughs> um, so I'm also like, mm, should I do that? But I think, I think I've had it set in my mind since last night that that's what I'm going to do because I get two garments, I get to knit with it for longer <laughs> and I'll get more wear out of it overall. So let me know what you think of that, I would be very interested and if you have any other suggestions for patterns that would be great. It's, um, I can't remember what the gauge was, I think it's 21 stitches. Um, and in the stitch pattern it's 34 rows I've gotten but it is like a um, like a knit pearl texture um, so it cinches it in a bit so yeah that's kind of the gauge that I'm at if anyone has any recommendations or has any opinions <laughs> and that kind of wraps up the knitting and I mean, <laughs> I've done some spinning, um, which I've got sat in front of me. I kind of, again, have been in this place where I'm like, I don't know what to knit. And also I've got a lot of stash yarn, but a lot of it has been gifted to me or a lot of it is um, small quantities that I can't knit. Like there's not a lot of options to knit you know, there's not a lot of options. There's not a lot of things I could knit out of it, basically. Um, and I'm trying, I'm trying to put off buying more yarn just because we're trying to save at the moment. And obviously it's cost of living crisis and um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to not buy any more yarn, but, <laughs> but, but, but there's so many things I want to knit. I want to knit, weirdly, I'm in the mood to knit summer tops. I really want to knit another Melodies top. I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but I can't remember what the correct pronunciation is. Um, by Vert Knit. I want to knit another one of those because it's one of my most worn cotton summer vest top things. And I want to knit another So Summer tee by Jessie Mead Designs um, and I knit that in a bright red cotton which I love the garment, I love the fit, I love the style, I love how wearable it is but I don't love the colour. So I want to knit another one of those because I just know I'd get so much use out of it but again I don't have the yarn for it so I'd have to buy some yarn cotton yarn and in such a small quantity quantity that I would need for those garments it wouldn't be too expensive um but it's still 
buying more yarn and spending more money and I'm kind of putting it off and trying to think of things that I can knit with the stuff that I have at the same time as feeling motivated to knit it because I want to knit it um so yeah that's kind of where I'm at and that, that's also why I wanted to do a podcast to be honest because <laughs> I wanted to show that yarn knitted up and I wanted to talk about it because it's one of the nicest combinations I've knit with the Panilla with that mohair is just beautiful and I think I think that Panilla is um more hard wearing than say the drops flora which I often use as a second strand um so I I mean I could be wrong but it feels like a yarn that's going to pill less I could be wrong I'm not sure I've not seen anyone knit with Panilla to my knowledge <laughs> I could be wrong um so this yarn combination just feels perfect it feels like it's going to be durable as well as soft um and also it's special yarn like I really want anyway I'm just I could just go round and round in circles thinking about it because it's I just don't want to make the wrong decision but I need to make a decision so yeah well let's just end on some spinning um which is this it is I believe it's Apple Door by oh my gosh I cannot remember I cannot remember I will link it in the description um that's gonna annoy me to no end I can't remember um I can't remember what the colorway is and I can't remember what the um fiber is <laughs> uh, it's a rustic to me it's it, it is rustic I wouldn't wear this on my neck or on my wrists or on my head um and this is I believe it's so in this scheme here it's 93 grams and it's somewhere around 180 meters so there's not a lot I can do with it I can't like I wouldn't wear gloves made out of it I wouldn't make I wouldn't wear a scarf made out of it because it's just so scratchy um I was um thinking of make, making socks with this just because like the fiber makeup is quite durable um and also this is my first three ply um which I'm super proud of I think it's I mean again it, it's hand spun so it's not it's never going to be super uniform but it's pretty it's pretty uniform um for me who isn't a spinner I hardly ever spin well that's a lie I, I have been spinning I spun a little bit but I'm not like I don't know all the terminology I don't know like I get com very confused with like a Z twist and an S twist like I I can't feel like for me <laughs> for some reason I can't picture that um I mean I can but then seeing the yarn so close up I'm like anyway so I'm not like a big spinner but I have wanted to do a three ply for a while now because um, at the beginning when I started spinning I definitely did thicker but since then like I spin pretty thinly um, and a two ply like I did a two ply out of I think it was the same apple door could be wrong and it's so thin like it's a heavy lace weight or a light fingering and I'm just like I don't know what to do with that <laughs> so I wanted to do a three ply because I was thinking Maybe I could, I could make socks with it and obviously a three ply is more durable than a two ply but I don't have enough to knit socks I don't think. I could use a different yarn for heels and toes but that means spinning more yarn and I don't have I don't have any more of this this is all I've got um, and the other colour I have from them 
is in a different base and the colour is very different and it wouldn't go. Not that I'm particularly bothered about that, to be honest, but it does mean spinning up another full lot of yarn, which I'm not feeling at the moment. So then I'm thinking maybe something for the house. I could do another like honey clutch. Don't really want to, I've made so many of them. Um, so if anyone has any suggestions, I think it's about, I think it's like, I think I'm right in saying it's about 180 meters for 93 grams, which I would say is a DK weight. It looks like a sport weight though. I feel like it would knit up to a sport weight. Um, I'd have to do a gauge swatch, I guess. I would love to knit socks with it. I would be very interested to see how durable it would be. My favourite pair of socks I've ever knit is actually hand spun. And again, it's from the same brand, which I can't for the life of me remember. I can't believe I can't remember. <laughs> um, I'll have it in the description. But yeah, although that was a super wash with nylon. So they have they've lasted so well they've worn so well they are just gorgeous i love them and i would be so interested in seeing how this yarn wears as a pair of socks um so i'm just gonna keep it and maybe one day i'll knit i'll spin up the other yarn the other fiber and do like a contrasty sock situation but if anyone help if anyone has any other ideas please let me know I would be very very interested um, to hear anybody else's um, suggestions um, so that's everything that I'm going to go through today there's a couple of other things but it's just like I either knit them a long time ago or um, yeah so <laughs> thank you so much for watching and yeah, if you've got this far, thank you so much. It means a lot and I know I've been going a long time. <laughs> um, which is sad, but hopefully I'll maybe do a podcast soon again. <laughs> we'll see, but yeah, I hope you're doing well. Um, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>